with Jesus You're the eyes that I see Sweet Jesus Yes, I'm dancing to your tune For as a clear pants for water So my soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes My heart beats for you For as a deep dance for water So my soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes my phone I started speaking in tongues I said no it's strange for me it has never happened before if I do this I always do it in the chapel or maybe when I am deep in prayers but now I was just sitting and I started speaking in tongues all of a sudden the spirit took over and the message came immediately that there is something that is going to happen to you but don't be scared my grace is sufficient I understood very clearly how it is because on Friday, I was in an all night at Igoba Zoa St. Andrew. And we knew what happened. God did his work so marvelously well. People, in fact, the altar servers could also receive anointing. They were possessed and I was shocked when the spirit led me to touch an altar server and the girl began to tear even the vestment she was wearing. Then I said, come on. You mean this person stands with us even on the sanctuary? And yet the person does not believe what is happening here. Because you can't be possessed and be on the sanctuary of God and remain the same. But yet this person could stay in the sanctuary of God without nothing happening to her. I said, come on. And when it happened today, I remembered. I said, okay, you people have come for me. I am ready. But I know today that my people in St. Abbott will receive something miraculous by the power of the risen Lord. In the name of Jesus. And after the scene, all of a sudden, miraculously, people from nowhere, it was a bush. How can people come out from nowhere? Different persons, bike men stopped. A bus stopped. And they came down to say, we must help you out of this situation. And I was surprised. I said, come on. Where are they coming from? Holy Ghost, you are doing your work. And as we were driving, they could help. Once we were moving, my hands began to be hot. I said, okay, the power of his presence are just declared to me. That what they planned did not come to friction. And the person with me was saying, 1st of July. I said, it's the month of testimony for somebody. In the name of Jesus. It was all planned out. It was all planned out. And so I want to plead with you that the program is starting now is not by accident they wanted by all means possible that i do not come to this place do you know that even while we we're coming along the way there was more than 500 trucks they, it wasn't possible to pass that road any longer and while i was with the person who was with me he said father let us be patient we will pass here today i said my friend the way i'm looking at this thing Eight o'clock, we meet us here. We've not passed this. Look at the vehicles now. I said, now, make a U-turn. We are turning. Divine wisdom came immediately. He said, turn this vehicle. Otherwise, you'll remain here forever. By now, I would, have been, I would have called Father Nick to say, Father, please, help to anchor this program. We turned the vehicle, and we took a very long route. But yet, I am here. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. The month of July is a month that you will testify. If they cannot get me, they cannot get you. I speak as a priest of God most high. And I prophesy upon somebody here that your life will change in this month of July in the name of Jesus. There shall be a divine testimony. Somebody shall testify. In fact, see, let me tell you, let me tell you. Somebody will call me to say, Father, it has happened again. Somebody will testify in the name of Jesus. Let's be seated. Hey, I said they had it all planned out. 
but because I serve the living God. You don't fight the person with grace. If you fight the person with grace, you face disgrace. Ah, can I hear somebody? I said, if you fight the person with grace, you face disgrace. Ah, ah. They had it all planned out. Two days, from two days ago, I was, I said, what is happening? What is? I've been in the spirit for the past two days. It has not left me. I said, what is happening? Anywhere I go, I begin to speak in tongues. I said, something, I said, something is about to happen that I am not aware of, but I know that grace is sufficient. I said, something is about to happen. I was telling the person with me, I said, see, I have been experiencing this, this thing that something is about to happen. And I think I was telling him, I, think, I said, is it, that, is it that they are trying to ambush me? Is it that? Or this guy is going to have an accident? Hallelujah. But they had it all planned out. But the way they planned it, it did not succeed. Why? I serve a God who is alive. And I said, I told him as I was coming, I said, see, I will use this as a testimony. And I will let you know that we serve a living God. If you serve a living God, let me hear you shout, Hallelujah! You've done so hey. much for me. I cannot tell it all. Hey, if I had ten thousand toys, yeah, it still would be enough. He said, When you heal, you heal you completely. You are worthy. You are worthy. You worship you in adoration. You worship you in adoration. You worship you in adoration. Hey, what shall I? What shall I rest? Unto Messiah, for he has done, for he has done so very much for me. Oh, what shall I render hey, unto Desire? For he has done, for he has done so very much for me. Hey, Nara, Nara, Jesus, a clap of ring, a clap of ring. A very quick one. A very quick one. Today, we shall be looking at the power in the name. The power in the name. And our scriptural passage will be First Samuel chapter 17, from verse 40 to 51. First Samuel 17, 40 to 51. He took his stick in his hand, selected five smooth stones from the river bed, and put them in his shepherd's bag, in his pouch. Then, sling in hand, he walked towards the Philistine. The Philistine, preceded by his shield bearer, came nearer and nearer to David. When the Philistine looked David up and down, he saw only a lad with rudely cheeks and attractive appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog for you to come after me with sticks? 
And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistines said to David, Come over here, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild beasts. David retorted to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, with spear, and with javelin, but I come to you in the name of Shaveh Sabaoth, God of the armies of Israel, whom you have challenged. Today Yahweh will deliver you into my hand. I shall kill you and I shall cut off your head. Today I shall give your corpse and your head. Today I shall give your corpse and the corpses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the white beasts. The power in the name. For some of us who may not know this story, it started from verse chapter 17. We are told Goliath challenged the Israelites. There was a serious battle between them. The Philistines were at loggerhead with the Israelites. Now Goliath came out, a giant, heavy guy. There is no need to fight. If you can give me one person, if the person wins, we become slaves. But if we win, you become slaves. And the whole people of Israel were scared. And now the father of David, Jesse, sent his son, David, to go and meet his three brothers. Their names are Eliab, Aminadab, and Shema, the big three. These people were already joining hands with Saul to fight the battle. When David came into the picture, he heard them talking about challenge. And he asked what was the case. He was to bring food. When the brothers saw him coming, immediately he came to them. The first thing they said, who did you leave the flock for? Because he was to take care of the flock. He was the last born of the household of Jesse. So his duty was flock taking, take care of them. So they asked him, who did you, who did you leave it for? Why, why are you here? You always try to poke nose. You always try to do what they didn't send you over Sabi. He said, but daddy said I should come and give you people something. But while he was there, he overheard some armies, some, some, some people talking about a challenge. He now said, ah, what, what are they going to give the person who is going to come out to face this heavy guy? And he said, one of the, one of the things or one of the benefits is that you will marry the daughter of Saul. David said, okay, what else? Then he took it upon himself. But before now, know this. David, and in chapter 16, David and Saul already had some kind of filial relationship. He had already told Jesse, the father of David, to send David to him so that David will help him play music whenever the Spirit of God leads him. So they were already having some kind of friendship. So when David came to meet him and tell him, I will challenge the Goliath. He burst into laughter. Now, come on, you. How can you? You are, you are only a small boy. You are a lad. And how can you challenge a giant? You Follow me. We are going somewhere. How can you challenge a giant? It's not possible. Now, let me tell you. Sometimes, we look at our problems as Goliath. And when we look at our problems as Goliath, for us in our minds, it is practically impossible to overcome. So we, we are so ten, we are so fearful, we are so scared that, ah, this one a big wahala, there's nothing I can do any longer. This was the eye that they were using to look at David, even their brothers, even King Saul. This was the same eye. You are only a lad. It's okay. Since you say you have volunteered yourself to fight this battle, now come, he, David came. He wore David everything, armor, shield, everything David could wear. But after David had worn all of these, he could not move. And he turned to the king. This is not what I need. Take your things. Now putting it in our contest, putting it in our contest, the wearing of so many things could be seen as we looking for solutions everywhere when we really have the solution. As we 
looking for solutions, going from place to place, wearing all kinds of things, thinking this will help me overcome, but not knowing that the real solution is with the master. The real solution is with him. And no matter how long it is, when the time comes, we are told in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, at the appointed time, he shall deliver you. He will surely do it. All you need is just to believe, just to have this firm faith in him. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He has never failed. He's not a man. Exodus chapter Numbers 23, 19. He's not a man that he should lie. What he says he will do, he will surely do it. He said, have I said it and it has not come to pass? Never. The word that goeth forth from my mouth never returned to me void. But it must accomplish that which it has been sent to do. He said, come. Come to the spring of living water. Come and drink without money. Come and buy, buy milk without money. And so David told, So, come on, take your stops. I don't need this for my battle. And he went to the battlefield. The same thing that Saul saw, a young lad who had no experience. But David, before we go to that battle, David had told Saul, Come on. I have been with flock. I have been shepherding these sheep for long. I have been shepherding them. And whenever lions, whenever prey come to disturb, I always stand and fight. I have never run away. And I know what it means to have an experience to fight this guy. Amen. And he went into the battle. We are told he picked a stick and five stones while he entered into the battle. For some of us, we may be wondering what is the priest saying? This is a scenario of our own life, our own experiences. We come into the battle, whenever we are ready, we reconcile with God. We come with him into the battle. And we stand tall face to face with the situation at hand. And we look at the problem. Oh, this is the problem. Ah, why am I running? And now Goliath confronts David. He seemed hard to put fear because you know what? When fear overcomes you, you have no power to even pray. When fear dominates, you have no power to look up. You don't have that strength any longer. Goliath said, come on, am I a dog? How can you come to me with sticks? How can you come to me with, with stones? In fact, I'm going to devour you. I will give your body to the birds. We are told after he finished, David immediately retorted, and said to himself, you come against me with spear. You come against me with javelin. You come against me with sword. But I come against you in the name of the Lord. Everybody say, in the name of the Lord. There is power in that name. There is power in that name. I come against you in the name of Yahweh Sabaoth. And we are told, for one week God is a majority. When God stands for you, nobody can pull you down. When God tells you, go, I am with you. Do you know that when David became king, every battle he went, he consulted God. David was the first king who never lost any battle. Check the scriptures. He never Every battle he went with, he will go to God first. Will I be victorious? He will hear, go, I am with you. An assurance of faith. Go, I am with you. And every battle he went, he was victorious. Till he died, he was victorious. Little wonder he was called the apple of God's eye. Come on. He was victorious. And he went into that battle. We know what happened at the end of the battle. He defeated Goliath and his name was everywhere. In every situation that you think is unsurmountable, come to God. Every situation you think is unsurmountable, you just, you just imagine it and say, God, this is, this is, this is unsurmountable. I share you an experience. When I was a seminarian, for those who know Igeduma very well, I was to give, go for a program in Igeduma 
one Thursday, charismatic program. I was invited. But before that day, while I was praying for the program, the message came that, hey, this program you are going to, you are going to have an accident. I'm not like, why? He said, there's going to be an accident. If you go with a bike man who is going to ride you there, the bike man is going to die. But if you go alone, you will survive it. I said, okay. It's a tough one. My mom just bought a new bike. And I said, hey, I will not tell her this one. Though. If not, she will not allow me to carry this bike. Time was closed. I took the bike. I prayed. I said, Father, if it is possible, put the devil to shame. Let me not have this accident. I know it has come as a revelation. I've seen this. But please, let it pass by. I prayed. I fasted. I went. Look at the church there. At the junction of the church, one car from nowhere just picked me from behind. The man did not even wait to see whether I survived. Just picked me and he drove off. He side mirror fell down. Continued with speed, thinking that I have died. I also was falling. I was tumbling and I was asking myself, why am I tumbling? I didn't know that I wasn't even the one controlling myself any longer. I was tumbling. I was saying, ah, stop, stop. Then I fell to the ground. I stood up, carried the bike, keep, dropped it by the side. And I did like this. I was thinking, so you mean, so you mean, so all the prayer was not praying, so what happened now? While I was still thinking, my parish priest went to see his farm. He just came out. He said, brother, good evening. I said, good evening, father. And I said, ew, you would have been the first person to see my dead body here. Uh -uh. I shook my head. I said, because I said, believe in God, it will never happen. I still went for the program. After the program, I was telling them, I had an accident. They said it's a lie. I showed them my hands like Jesus. I said, look at my hands. They were peeled. It was bleeding. But do you know what happened? Throughout that program, I did not feel any pain. And that program was massive. I didn't feel any pain till at the end when I told them I had an accident. They started checking. Are you sure? Are you sure? I said, yes. And when I came home and I told my mom, the first thing she said was, they will say, I have used my son for blood money to buy back. That was why he had an accident and he died. I told her, I said, don't worry. She was crying. He said, you, never, you don't know what has happened. They would have said, I used you for blood money. And it will be the news all over the town that this bike was just bought not a week ago. Just a week. Accident and the son died. And when it repeated itself today, I said, hey, anointing is going to flow. I said, anointing is going to flow here today. And they were trying by all means to stop it. So whenever you have any problem, any situation, don't be scared. Bring yourself down. Calm down. Look at the situation. Is it bigger than God? That's the first question. So you mean I've been, I've been a Christian. I've been serving God for all these years. You mean God cannot handle this for me? If God cannot handle this for me, it means I have failed. And that was what the children of the Israelites said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, even if, even if God will not save us. See, we have been serving God all our life. But even now, if he does not save us, we don't mind. But will never bow to your image. And when Elijah used the word, if I be a prophet of God, let there be no rain. It did not rain. Do you know what it means to speak on behalf of God? Ishalohim. Speaking on behalf of God. You talk for God. And God honors. Because you believe. But the faith in action. Are you ready? In 2 Kings chapter 19, from verse 10 to 19, Sinecareb sent a letter to the king. He said, come, let me tell you, your God cannot save you. 
Ah, your God cannot save you. Go and ask other nations. I have conquered them. Their gods did not save them. What did Sinekareb do? For many persons here that they will tell you that you have been summoned by Ayelala. Who is Ayelala? Carry the letter and drop it here and see what happens. Give the person seven days. It's faith in action. The king, after seeing the letter, said, wow. This is a direct threat. This is a direct confrontation to God. And he took the letter, opened it on the sanctuary, on the altar of God, and knelt down and prayed. Oh God, my father, they have challenged you, not me. Sinekareb has said, you cannot save us, but prove to him that you are God. Do you know that God replied? God told Isaiah, go and tell him, Sinekareb will not even see the city. No arrow will be shot. In fact, he will not enter, not to talk of seeing the city. After that prophecy, in verse 55, he went to Sinekareb and dead a heavy blow. About 150 persons were killed in his camp. Sinekareb had to run for his life. Where he ran to, the woman he met there killed him. You can't, you can't battle with God and win. You, you threaten a, a, a Christian, a child of God, and you want to win? Never. He gave him a letter. He said, Yo, don't think, Jesus, don't think your God can save you. You mean, the, all this while I have been serving God, and somebody comes and tells me, don't think your God can save you, and you take it. Some people will start fidgeting. When the devil puts fear in you, he, he's, he becomes victorious over you. Never, never allow fear. And while they were in the boat, they were scared. And Jesus said, oh, people of little faith. Come on. I am even here with you. And you are still afraid. You can't tell the wind. You can't tell the storm. And this could, be, this could mean for us the storm of life. The wahala, the troubles of this world. You can't you can speak to it. While I'm even here with you, in the blessed sacrament, you can't speak to the situation. Amen. Amen. Finally, never you think God is silent when he's working something for you. Whenever it seems that God is silent, he's working at the best possible plans for you. The very best. Never you think he's silent. I have shared this story many times. In every place I go for programs, I tell them. Joseph, in Genesis chapter 37, was shown in a dream that he was going to be great. God did not show Joseph that he was going to become a slave. God did not show Joseph that he was going to be put in the pit. God did not show Joseph that he was going to be a slave in the house of Potiphar. God did not show Joseph that he was going to be in prison. But all this while, it seemed that God was silent. And Joseph went through all of these. His own blood brother, his own blood brother, planned against him. Here comes the dreamer. They didn't even call him their brother. Here comes the dreamer. And he was, in fact, they both planned to kill him. But one of them intervened, Reuben. Say, well, what are we going to kill him for? What, what will his blood give us? They put him in the pit. Joseph did not plan that. He only told his parents and he told his brothers, I have a dream that all of you bowed down to me. Say, what? Small boy like you last born. Are you okay? Look at where you are in the, in the, in the hierarchy of things. You are not weird. And we are buying down to you. Who are you? He said, Wala, wo, wo, I beg. I just dream I get. Now dream I be your get. Say, your dream. Let's see how that dream will materialize. This, we are his brothers. Let's see how that dream will materialize. As he was coming, they saw him and said, Hey, see the dreamer. Not even my brother. See the dreamer. They caught him. And it was sold for 30 pieces of silver. It was sold away. He went to the house of Potiphar as a slave. 
normally, normally, for anybody who has succeeded to even get into the house of Potiphar as a slave, because Potiphar was a high person in the rank of Pharaoh, he would have said, okay, let me even have my pleasurable time with his wife. But Joseph said, no, I believe, I believe, I know that God is working on something for me. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. And the woman shouted, hey, rape, rape. Everybody said, hey. They came inside, captured Joseph. For some of us, let me, just, let me just relax here. Since God has not shown me anything again, what is my own? But Joseph said, no. He was steadfast. Even when God was no longer speaking. It seemed God was silent. He went to prison for many years. He was there. He saw two people there. A wine presser and a baker. And he said, hey, one of you will, will be executed. But one will be restated back to Pharaoh. Say, but please, when you go back to Pharaoh, please remember me. That one went back to Pharaoh and forgot Joseph. At the appointed time, God gave Pharaoh a dream no one could interpret. God is working at something for you. All you need is just to believe. He's working at something for you. And God gave Pharaoh a dream. And nobody could. And the man remembers, say, hey, my bad, my bad. No, 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 no. There is somebody who, who helped me in prison. I don't know if you can call him. He's, a, he's an Israelite. He's, he's a Jew. Just bring him in. And that was how Joseph stepped his foot in the palace. And the very day he stepped his foot in the palace, he never went back the same. That day, his life changed. Somebody's destiny, somebody's life is going to change from today for better. In the name of Jesus. The very first day Joseph stepped in, he never stepped out. I might speak it to somebody. Joseph stepped in, he never stepped out. And he entered. And that was his beginning of progress. And he told the king, hey, you, your dream is quite simple and familiar. Seven years of famine, seven years of flourishing. Now you will need a man who is going to keep when we have abundance. He didn't say himself. He was not ambitious. If it was some of us, we will quickly say, you will need me to put yourself in the line. Never. Joseph did not put himself in the line. He just believed that God is working out something for him. God is working out something for you. He just believed it. And he told him, just seven years, seven years. And Pharaoh said, there is no better person to take this position than him, Joseph. From pit to slavery. From slavery to prison. From prison to palace. Look at the trajectory. Look at the flow of his life. Somebody that was destined for greatness right from childhood. He took so many years. At the end, did his brothers not come to him and bowed? And Joseph said, I am Joseph. And they started crying. Those who want to mock you now will rejoice with you. Yeah. I didn't hear that, amen. Yeah. Those who think they are mocking you now will celebrate with you. Yeah. Hey, you may have been pushed to the fringe of destiny. You may have been re rejected, abandoned. You may have been forgotten, thinking they'll say, eh, no minor. She be they say, make it come, do what they do. But yet, she said, no, she wanted to go to church. Hey, I tell you today, they will rejoice with you. And Joseph told them, he didn't hold heat against them. He said, come on, God planned all this so that you will see. And he wants me to help you. That is why he used you to push me to where I am today. Who knows? I would have been here if you have not pushed me. So when you have been pushed, do not cry. Do not weep. Because God is ordering your steps unto greatness. You are marching step by step. It may be slow, first in Christ. It may be slow, but you are marching step by step to your success. You are marching step by step to your greatness. And when it comes to lamb lights, you will rejoice and they will rejoice with you. Be on your feet, everybody.